What's up, guys? Live what? from the MGM Grand. How does location. it feel, boys? On location. Ah, wow. 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 Here we are. Wow. Just another week in the same location talking about things that we love and we're so passionate about. Live from the Firehouse Sub Studio. <laughs> <laughs> We got, got some banging ass firehouse subs uh, when we first got here. Yeah, and it left an impact on me. It thought did. about doing we the show there. We thought that was going to be our studio. We At considered one point, it. We heavily. actually considered it. I even said that the firehouse sub was the best sub I have ever had, wow. and I am a subway. <laughs> yeah, that's you a statement. Get roasted in the comments section. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, they make a good sub. They make a good <laughs> sub. But it's funny. <laughs> This is like Jesus Christ. He's barely That's on a the bold show. statement. It's a he's bold a, he's statement. He's a uh, short term guest. I'm kidding, he's not I'm a regular. Kidding. This guy here. I'm actually just gonna go. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> We've been having a few drinks here and there. And <laughs> no, guys, get a welcome loose back for this episode. Welcome we back. Loose. Yeah, we're, it's a, it's a good one because uh, we're the gonna drinks be talking about ice water, so just ice okay. water and tea and stuff like that. That makes <laughs> it makes you feel healthy and Black stuff. tea. Um, but guys, seriously, uh, it's awesome to be able to sit here and talk about something that I'm, I love and that uh, yeah. I know the audience really enjoys. I know they enjoy seeing us getting together and having a great time. And man, this entire experience has been absolutely phenomenal. And I really just want to thank you guys for making it possible because if you guys didn't tune in, well, we wouldn't have a channel and this just wouldn't be possible. And people and companies like AC Infinity wouldn't take a gamble on us and support us when we told them that we had a huge dream to get three goons from across the continent and uh, start producing some pretty fire content. So I want to give a shout out to AC Infinity because they did. They believed in us and they are supporting this podcast. And if you can't notice, we've got uh, their name all over the backboard behind it's kinda us. It's kind of sexy. Because it kind of sexy? Man, I'd date it. Uh, I'm just saying that uh, if you go to acinfinity.com, it's a strange transition, but I'm running it. Uh, acinfinity.com, use promo code the stash 15 and use check out any of their products over there and save a few dollars off a of checkout. Hit them up on IG and say thank you for supporting from the stash. Absolutely, yeah. baby. Guys, good looking out for that. This is a good one. I'm excited about this. In fact, I don't think this is ever anything we've ever talked about before. I don't even think on my own channel. Yeah, I, I've never talked about best harvest. You know, best maybe. harvests ever. 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 No cap, ever. baby. Zero cap. No yamaka, <laughs> yeah. no do-rag, no scully. Nothing. No fitted. Nothing. No um, trucker cap. If you didn't know or real quick. Cap. We do record these epis live uh, sometimes over on twitch.tv slash from the stash. This one is actually live. Shout out to everybody in the chat right now yeah. watching this, all the subs, all the commenters. We really appreciate you guys. If you want to enjoy the com or, or come participate in the conversation, twitch.tv slash from the stash. You want to check up on all the latest news for from the stash, you can go to from the stash.com as well. And uh, slash merch might get you with some of the latest merch. Some flash shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but so, who wants to start, man? Harvest, it's crazy time. We'll hand it to so let's to start roll. with our best first harvest, like your first best first one. Best? Yeah, the one that you were like, this is it. Not the one that now you look back as the best, but the, the one, one where you were like, like, I think I can do this. I'm a good grower. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Gave you that confidence to keep going. What do you, who's yeah, going go first? ahead. Go ahead, Rob. Go start it My off. first indoor harvest, actually, because I had some yeah. outdoor experience first. But my first indoor harvest, I had like, I think I had 14 or 15 different cultivars. They all turned out great, like just so good. And I was smoking brick at the time, so it was just amazing. And I probably pulled technically maybe two pounds of 14 plants. Wasn't great in theory. Whoa, whoa, 14 pounds? 14 plants. Oh, two, two pounds. pounds. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my first run. I was running a parabolic hood, so it was like an octagon-shaped hood. An umbrella? Pretty much. Right. No glass. No ventilation or anything with a thousand watt HPS, right? This was early days. This is when it first started popping for medical. And I had uh, at the time 28 plants underneath that light total, I believe 14 different genetics, feeding them all the same, treating them all the same. No out, or I just outdoor air coming in. I had nothing being pulled out. Didn't know what the hell I was doing. Thought I did. But man, the bud was so good. And it, I had so many different kinds. I had 14 different types of flower. That was amazing for me. Never had that ever in my life. I've had two, maybe three, but it was three different kinds of brick. You know what I'm saying? Where I'm like, this is tan. This is brown. This is olive. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> I'm not going to call it green. <laughs> what happened? You know, this is different, you know? But it was all shit. As where this was 14 different cultivars of some 
fire. That's impressive. I, you know, I don't like think I've ever had blown that. Blown away, man. man. Fourteen at once. You guys yeah. actually both kind of do that. You guys always have a lot. We're cultivar horse. Yeah, yeah I've got like two, variety. three at any given time. And yeah. yeah, fourteen. Fourteen. Man, I would have been so excited to show my friends. It bro. was the that was yield was of quality and variety. It was not of of yield in terms of weight. You mm. know, but it was so impressive for me to be able to have. Like, what do you want to smoke? Yeah. Oh, check this one out. And they were all so different. Like nothing was similar. They were all dramatically different. So it was really nice to have the good reference point of every plant could be different. Every end result could be different. No matter how green and regular it looked as a baby, all those clones that came the exact same shape and size, the end product could be yeah. totally different. You know, and that really was like, wow, I'm getting it. Was I can there, do this. Was there one of those 14 that just stood out? Cinderella 99 and it was called Green Crack, which wasn't really Green Crack. Mm, it was uh, Holy Girl Kush. Oh, yeah, you've, uh, you've mentioned that. Yeah, you've, oh, you've talked about that. Yeah, I hunted that one with 10 packs, DNA genetics, 10 packs. Never found the same phenotype. Close. Wow. No cigar. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. You? Damn. You got one that stands Damn. out? Um, I mean, one Yo, that your first, of... that we're, your first big one that you're the most excited about. It was like, yeah, I got this. See, so uh, first of all, disclaimer, right? I'm a small home grower. I can only grow a max of 12 so like best harvest ever. It's like twelve plants. Some people may be like, oh, twelve plants. That's it. See, well, see. Well, that that's me, right? Twelve plants max is all I can grow. Uh, what comes to mind Canada. though? What twenty five in Canada? Yeah. Twenty five. They call them a couple plants. The conversion. Wood. That's the conversion. That's the, <laughs> that's the conversion. <laughs> <laughs> the conversion to Canadian uh, units. Divided by four. <laughs> <laughs> and 32 degrees freedom units. 27. Yep. <laughs> Actually, you're under. You know? No, one of the best harvests that, that come to mind, just auto flowers, right? I want to, best harvest for auto flowers I've had um, that comes to mind is with Carmelicious by MSNL. Mm. So I uh, did a run with them. That was a while ago. Yeah, oh, you remember that? Yep, that yeah. was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was on one of my channels. It's not, on, it's not on YouTube anymore. Mm. Yeah, it was, it was yep. one delete. Them. Uh, yeah, I was on a terminated channel. Yeah, mm-hmm. terminate you know, YouTube, <laughs> giving acts and channels back then and stuff like that was one of them, and never recovered that footage. But uh, anyways, car malicious. I had it in a four by eight grow tent, and I had I think it was eight different plants at the time, all of the same strain. It's auto flower, and uh, it was fun. I was growing them all different ways, right? So I had the um, I had the training, low stress training on some. Some I didn't train at all. Um, some I topped and. Uh, the, just being able to see the different outcomes, you know, the ones that I didn't train at all, I ended up getting uh, four or five ounces per plant, oh. just straight up Christmas tree style. Yeah, yeah that's the ones I did haul. train, I got more six, mm-hmm. seven. The, the biggest one was eight ounces per plant. Damn, uh, for an auto, which I thought was cool. Ooh, I know impressive. these days half people pound are, per yeah. plant yeah. auto, and that was an a auto. long time ago. Oh yeah, and that was to, a very long time. Ago. See those numbers back then was unheard of. That's what Damn I'm saying. Man. I felt really good back then. Nowadays, wow. I know they're like, oh, like three pounds per well, auto. Back and, then, you couldn't top them. You couldn't plant. You couldn't drink. <laughs> well, back then, people so would go a quarter ounce of an auto. You didn't get enough to even smoke. Like <laughs> that. That literally would be the type of of confidence builder to make somebody just grow autos. Like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't Look at me. Care. Look at I this. Grow seasonally, yeah. you know, I'm not going to keep these clones around. I don't have to hunt male or female. Right. I'm just going to pop these autos and run it. You know, especially if you know they're going to do good. But that's, I think, like that's like best harvest isn't always just yield. It's no, overall. No, no. no I yeah, think I don't remember what the yield was. I was going to say, I think that's going to be the common denominator between all of us. Mine, I, none of mine are my. Well, maybe one of them is my biggest, but that's not has nothing to do with why it's my greatest. Yeah, yeah my biggest ones have been the harvest, weed I don't like so, yeah. the best. <laughs> you know, I feel my biggest ones have been the weed I don't like the best. <laughs> you know, I've had an issue with, uh, I'd never weigh my stuff. Like, I, I get a ballpark, but I never weigh all of it. You know what I'm saying? I'll do from w- one new cultivar, two new cultivars. But I'm not like, let's see if I got five versus four this last one or six. Versus... That's been not the biggest thing for me. But I can tell when I'm looking at almost jars. That's my bro science thing. It's like, yeah. well, I got way more jars than this time. Well, that that's one. it. It's, a, it's you know? a unit of measurement. Yeah. That's fair. It's just we're not using the unit that everybody else is. It's not super accurate. It's just to. more of right. my, my eyeball Bigger measurement. buds will take up more space and smaller yeah. buds and smaller buds might weigh more. And, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, Back in the day, I used to be real strict. It's like, I have 289 Point three five grams of this yep. harvest, and then he weighs it tomorrow, <laughs> and he's got a little no, bit less. I don't care about that anymore. Right, right. Just yeah. that full smoke yield. an eighth off it, and then weigh it, and then well, be like, okay, I think I smoked this. Much. <laughs> I'll add that on top. Of it. <laughs> yeah, it was an ounce. Uh, the 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 thing is, is like, uh, 
when do you weigh it, man? Like do dry, you, dry weight, dry when? At the end of one month? At the end of three months? At the end of when it's at that six, moisture level? Right, ideal moisture, moisture level. ideal moisture level. That's right. So that would be after like a good two, maybe three week, four week cure. I put it more around a month to be to be more of a. So it takes rule to get to thumb. yeah, yeah, um, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's. I totally forgot what I was talking about, but I'm going to talk about me now. Uh, my favorite harvest. <laughs> uh, my first one that really, we, I've kind of talked about it a few times over the course of the last few weeks being here in these uh, live studios. But uh, the uh, I had a critical hog. Oh, yeah. It was my very first. I, uh, I, I, got, the, I got the seeds from uh, a buddy of mine who was kind of getting into growing. I kind of surpassed him at this point, but or by this point, by now, I mean. Um, but he gave me this critical hog and it was the first time where I thought I'm going to, I'm going to grow this and I'm going to grow it right. And I actually believe it was my second time growing and I used a micro space bucket and I gave it all the attention it needed to just really thrive. And I, I really went through an entire DIY phase, but this particular harvest isn't, isn't, it doesn't stand out to me because of yield not because of potency, not because of smell, not because of genetics, but I actually learned and I grew the most as a gardener throughout that cycle because my very first grow, I botched it. I put the plant on 12 and 12 and I was lucky if I got maybe an eighth, maybe a quarter off of it. Dry weight, probably like two and a half grams. But it's like when I hit this critical hog and I hit this harvest, I thought, I realized like I've got it in me. I, I can do this, man. And this thing... You know, up until many, many moons afterwards, it was my largest harvest. And it just, it really taught me that I think I have what it takes to grow this plant. And perhaps, and I was, I was already documenting. I was a blogger before I was a vlogger. So I, I was doing a lot of writing on my experiences. And I, I thought, you know what? I, I really feel like anyone can grow this plant. You don't have to be a botanist. You don't have to be smart. You can be dumb. You can be dumb, man. You can man. be dumb doing it just like me and succeed. But it's, that's the conf I feel like that's what I, all three of our our best ones so far have been that. They've, the ones that gave us the confidence of certain things. Like, that's yeah, it. We could do it. I can we do this. Do it, it's, not this. It's not this mystical process, man. Like yeah. It's like we talked, we've talked about this in the past in regards to when we go out places and when we talk to other consumers and stuff, it's like when they find out that we're gardeners, they're like, Wow. Mm -hmm. It's like we're revered, you know, and yeah. then and then it's like it it, it it it's almost mystical. But then when you do it, you know, it's like wow, it's not that hard. Well, you know, you really have an appreciation for the the product and the plant and all of it too. And I think the people who respect that, they get the work that goes into it. So when you do it, and you don't have that good harvest, you don't have the good overall end product. It, it kind of kicks you in the teeth and makes you not want to continue. And then there's a lot of people who are saying like, oh, I try and I. Just, couldn't do it, man. I failed. And then they explain how they did it. And you're like, well, the windowsill is, is, is an area. Right. Was, but is it an ideal area for your plant? No. Was that harvest you just shared with us your first harvest? No. 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 Of course not. You failed. You probably failed a few times before Miserably. that. To get to a point where you could pull off a successful harvest. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't come at your first time. If it did, then it's like then you did the due diligence and you, you, you were watching you worked, from the stash. You worked for it. It didn't come by it, great. Yeah. yeah, you did it. You work. You put in the work. So you know, it's it's definitely something to be proud of. Um, uh, when it comes to a harvest, did you guys ever have one that was just like easy cake? You just like plant it, forget it, and you ended up with just tons of ounces. I wouldn't uh, say yeah. plant and forget it. Yeah, yeah, that's a but an easy one. Easy. Yeah, 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 yeah easy. Yeah, yeah. Struggle it's free throughout the whole way with, yeah. with yeah. minimal extra efforts, right? Environment styled in, yeah. Yep. yeah, yep. One that stands out for me, you actually said it was green crack. Green crack for me was just phenomenal. One of my favorite harvests of all time. Cake, it was really easy to grow, didn't have to put any, any, any extra effort. In fact, I think I grew it with like seven other plants, cultivars, and it just, it just tagged along, it just did its own thing. And I was like, yeah. I think that's when you, you get lucky and you find the right genetics that'll just play with your your setup that you already have. Mm. That's like how a lot of commercial growers do it. Is they're like, does it work in my setup? If it doesn't, you're going. Home growers will bend. They're like, nah, I want this one. I'll change up my lighting style. I'll lift it. Less humidity. Change the nutrients. They're up for one mm -hmm. cultivar out of like 10. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that's where, it, when you do find that easy one, you appreciate it and you remember. But if the smoke doesn't match with it or the consumption, whatever, doesn't match with it, 
Doesn't matter matter how easy it is. I grew a um, how was it? Grandmaster Kush. I remember I, I gifted this to Goblin. It was his first one that he grew indoor, and I got I think it was like fifteen and a half Z's off a, a hydroponic one that I grew. Nice, that's a good so hole. So easy to grow. Like it had no deficiencies. Mm. It was fat buds, easy to trim. And I don't know. I'd smoke CBD flour just as as much as I want to smoke that. Like I didn't get stoned at all. It was so average. Like it was real sweet. It was decent flavored, but like, man, it was like air bud is what I'd call it. It's like you can smoke everything about it, but it was just like air. There's nothing to it. You know, it didn't really hit me. But I had a ton of it. It was a great grow. It was one for the books, but I'm never growing it again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My hardest grows have been my best smoke. Right. Some, there's something about that struggle, yeah. man. You, yeah, one of the easy harvests. Yeah, for me, well, it comes to mind right away, and it was actually a couple years ago, a few years ago now, so it wasn't too, too far away. But uh, it was with the Curb Stomper and ISO 8 by Prism Labs. Mm. Curb I remember them the so. Curb Stomper was gorgeous. Yeah, too. I remember them so clear just because the whole way through the growth cycle, it was just like an easy grow. Um, you know, everything from just, uh, I remember, I think it was my first time in a seven gallon container. So I went up Big. a pot size. You know what I mean? So it just it became easier going up that pot size. But being in the vegetation stage, and I remember just shaping them both so perfect. Nice flat top on them. Uh, flipped them like real soon. Uh, you know what I mean? Probably only about 40 days in the vegetation stage and then flipping. Once I had them shaped the way I want to. And then healthy throughout the whole grow. And it was really with the dry amendments. Organic dry amendments the whole time. So a blend. I think it was the earth dust blend at the time is what I was using then. Uh, and then it was just healthy the whole way through. It was so easy hands off from there. You know, they stretched out. They weren't too heavy to where they were. Actually, I had I did have them in a trellis net towards the end. It wasn't like a full blown scrog net across the entire wall to wall or anything like that. But Some support. It did need support. All the buds on them were like super dense. A bunch of different. Uh, I didn't mention I trained it so they had probably about sixteen different branches each. You know, and then the, all, every single branch was just golden as far as like rock head, Is rock that hard. Stuff? Dense buds. You guys you smoked, smoked yes. the curb stuff. I, I, I remember it. it. was yeah. gorgeous man. too. Like it was. You I, could tell the homeless certain, enjoyed it too. Certain shit. <laughs> we gave it to the homeless. Certain shit has that look that you're like just looks immaculate. You're like, oh yeah, that's perfect. Yep. And I, I attribute a lot of that to the grower who's cured it properly, trimmed it properly, grown it properly. But the breeder who's had a genetic that just looks immaculate. That no matter what, perfect shape buds, literally high times looking stuff. Like that's choice. Good smoke. Yeah. Shout out to Chronic Four Twenty Inc. We have no labs. genetics. He's Prism Labs now. Yeah, that yep. was that was him. But the 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 bud structure was great. Trichome production, and then of Ooh, course towards the end terpenes. of like right before harvest, it's just you know, dropping the temps and just seeing the colors come out. It's just absolutely beautiful. And then obviously a good dry and cure went real smooth on that. And you guys actually smoked that stuff. Mm -hmm. And now what do you? It was oh good, my gosh, right? It was yeah, fantastic. It was a lot of like citrusy. Kind of uh, it had like a floral citrus aftertaste. Mm. To it. it was it was really really good. I really enjoyed it. It, it was oh, actually it was it was the one that stood out of the two, and the other one was um, was ISO. Nope, was ISO, no. nope. Frozen fuel. Yep. Frozen fuel. Yep. Frozen fuel yep. was really pretty too. It didn't hit as much. In the, Square in the one smoke. genetics. Yep. Yeah, Gorgeous yeah. They're both bud. great, great smokes. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, yeah. Again, only two plants is what I'm talking about here, and it was yeah. uh, a, a good out harvest for me as a small home dude? grower or something. Oh, damn. Dropping stuff. <laughs> it's pulling more. Toe. It's pulling more. You know what? Oh, yeah. My God. yeah. Well, cheers on oh, that, though. Yeah. You Thanks, know, I guys. think this is where, when you look at uh, best harvest, which best harvest? You know what I'm saying? Yield, experience, uh, diversity in cultivars. You know, for me, one that was like my coolest harvest, we'll say, was my recent one with white truffle. That was the most colorful, pretty, solid purple, pink leaf. Just like art looking harvest I've had where I'm like, wow. Your infatuation of that, like, r like rubbed yeah, on me, man, man. Where I'm like, I need this. Shit. Yeah, dude. It was I need just, it, wow. man. Cause yeah, you talked, wow. that was like a year ago yeah. or so, year and a half. Yeah, man. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yeah. Ooh, I never even, I never even tried it. Just the way you can always tell when someone's really excited about technically. it. Technically. Oh, I may have. You did. I may have. <laughs> but it, it wasn't crazy smoke, honestly. It wasn't stuff that you'd, once it's, broken down and in whatever apparatus you're consuming would you be like wow this stuff is just next level it, it was enjoyable but the overall experience of that look and the aesthetic side of it 
made me really appreciate the beauty and, and diversity in different cultivars. Where I'm like, this looks nothing like what I've harvested before. Nothing. Like, it's a whole new breed. Wasn't necessarily a great yielder at all, mm. but it was so fucking pretty. Like, something that I can't compare anything I've grown to. You ever had, like, yeah, like a harvest story? You ever had one where this stands out to me? It's like, it, it, it harvested great, yielded okay, hated it. Uh, Blue Dream. Blue Dream to me. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever grown it. I don't think no, I remember any no. of you. I've been following you guys for a while, but uh, I. Uh, no, I haven't grown Blue Dream. Blue Dream to me is one of those buds that's it's more it seems like it's more of a leaf matter bud rather than like those swollen calyx buds and harvested okay uh everything went pretty smooth got a decent amount from it which ended up being a problem because I didn't like it and I had way too much of it first world problems I get it but that's you know a bit of a downside but yeah Blue Dream stood out to me as one that I will probably never grow again I've grown twice and both times it came out just it's a very it's a I'm not going to describe it as a freak show at, at the genetic, but it's definitely a, a stand alone quality that it has that just doesn't appeal to me, in 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 smoke and flavor and just about everything. Harvested fine, but just kind of just meh. Do you guys ever have any similar experiences? You named it freak show when I grew out the freak oh. shows. Uh, yeah, that was a good call out. <laughs> um, I like kind of read my mind when I want to right. Uh, you know. Had a good harvest from it. It grew well. Uh, but indoors, it was real sensitive to the heat. I mean, I was only at 81, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, unfortunately, would, you know, the structure wasn't as dense as I would you know, typically like. Uh, flavor was good, real a fuely, um, good flavor. But I wasn't like, like I wouldn't grow it again, mm. you know? And a lot of people are, are hype about that. You know, yeah. it looks totally different, stuff like that. Uh, I mean, I still have the harvest. I enjoy the smoke, but it's just, it's meh. Meh. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Man. To me. Yep. Yep. Man. Yeah. Yeah. It's never been that appealing. The freak show's never been that appealing to me. It just, it, it's, it, she's very photogenic. You know, she stands out. I can understand the appeal of wanting to dive into it just to get an experience of something that's so extreme. Um, who's the one responsible for that? Shapeshifter? Yep. Shapeshifter. Yep, that's right. Um, yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, it, it's definitely one of those blue dream. I know a lot of people swear by it. You know, and I know a lot of people that are very, very pro freak show. You know, it's it's going to speak to you. You know, you ever had oh, yeah. a man? You ever had a man? Oh yeah, yeah. I definitely have had quite a few mans. <laughs> no, um, no, no, not relationships. I'm talking like <laughs> gardens. Oh, yeah, yeah gar plants, plants, flowers. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I've had a couple. You know, I think my biggest one, my biggest letdown was. Uh, and a great company, and honestly, it was good smoke. Just, I hated it. Was Mephisto Chem, or was it Creme de la Creme? Hmm. Wow. Yeah, I was really expecting a Chem dog flavor, and instead I got like grape soda. And I fucked grape soda. And I was so disappointed because it was a big plant, and it yielded really well. It was a great looking bud, and everything was nice about it, but it was so grape. And it just like, uh, I was going into it with my mind thinking I was getting a classic Chem dog funk. And that was my whole thing. It was maybe a creamy chem dog, maybe a little different there, but chem dog, yeah. And then as it's growing more and more, I'm like, oh, oh, gross. Oh, no. <laughs> You're getting sweeter and sweeter. Oh, What's it's happening? So it, no. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. That happened in my last chemistry run. I just ran uh, six at home for chemistries and six at Franklin Fields. And we found three at Franklin Fields that were all gassy. And I found two at my house that were all fruity. Somehow. Fruity came out of Headbanger and Motor Breath. I have no idea, but I got them. Grew them out massive. Big plants. Thought it was going to be the best. Gas, gas, gas. No. It was sweet. <laughs> I'm so pissed. And I cloned them. I had all these high expectations. That's the problem is having high expectations yeah. and low, low delivery. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you say that because, like, you said massive, massive harvest turned out meh. I actually grew a red <sighs> poison which is a Durban Poison Cross, and it was an auto. And this thing... You an auto? Uh, bro, I've, you wouldn't believe it. I've grown a dozen autos and harvested them. Uh, that's why I'm a firm believer that they're a waste of fucking time. That's why I hate it. <laughs> uh, I, I grew, call it Professor Otto. Professor Otto, yeah, starting now. Um, don't call me that. Never say that about me. I I'm just, just, you're just one of that awkward silence. Cool. I, really I, that. <laughs> I just immediately thought about your your uh, video 
Stop. titled Stop Growing Autos. <laughs> From the guy that grows autos, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Otto. a lot of people in the chat were like, you don't even grow autos. Do you just say don't grow them because you suck at it? <laughs> I was actually, I, I've had some really incredible harvests, but that's to come. Uh, the one that I'm going to refer to at this moment is the Red Poison, Durban Poison Cross. It was an auto, one of my firsts, and uh, she was one stick. <laughs> she grew about four or five inches high. And she was a cute bud. little baby. Yeah. <laughs> It was actually fire ass smoke, man. man. It was some good smoke. So it's like, it's not all about size, boys. I don't have to tell you guys that, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was a bit low, eh? Yeah. Just blow the bell. A little yeah. bit of a <laughs> twack in the sack, you know? I think, uh, again, when you're looking at best harvest, it's totally subjective. Worst harvest, subjective. Mine have usually been letdowns of my own doing because I'm like, oh, it's going to be this, and it's not. But then I've had others where, like, I had these massive buds where I'm like, this is going to be huge harvest. But they were very sativa-like bud structure. So at the time, I was a firm believer, don't touch your buds. Leave them alone. Don't put your fingers on them. Don't do nothing. You're going to ruin it. You're bruising the trichomes. Won't smoke good. So I didn't touch it. But I assumed those buds had something to them. I ended up having like two and a half ounces off of the biggest looking plant I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like it was so, these buds were so big. But I mean, they were just the fluffiest, most airiest piece of ever. <laughs> I mean, it was good smoke, but it was it was one of those ones that was a massive letdown because I was just thinking, I was like, I'm going to be in trim jail for a month. Mm -hmm. Pounds off of this plant. <laughs> and it was less than any of my other plants. Biggest buds. Smallest producer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Big letdown. Wow. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about best harvests, one thing that comes to mind is one of my more enjoyable harvests. And <laughs> it wasn't even my harvest. So uh, I'm not taking the credit for this. Yeah, I sure. think I talked about this in a past episode, but one time I got invited over to my buddy's house. He invited me, show up, open up the door and to his room, and he's just got plants hanging there. He just harvested. And it was the first time that I ever saw a harvest. And uh, he handed me trimmers. He had trimmers ready for me to go. He's like, we're ready to trim. He needed my labor, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He needed <laughs> he's like, hey, friend. But it was like the most, it was so now. fun for me. It was so enjoyable because the first time I ever experienced it, you know what I mean? I had to uh, hand me the buds and he was teaching me how to trim and all that stuff. It was freaking awesome harvest. It was a, a great harvest. One of my favorite harvests. Wasn't mine, but it was my friend's harvest that I was a part of on that stage, you know what I mean? The the trimming and uh, yeah. drying stage. Was, well, being right in the field, you know what I'm <laughs> saying, versus the sideline and we're getting, waiting for it to smoke. So when's it going to be ready? Let me know. You're like, I'm, yeah, right. I'm here like, producing we, it. I'm one of the producers. Can we smoke this now? He's like, no, no. We yeah. got to wait for a bit. I had no idea what I was doing back then. I was just try it. My eyes were all wide eye and so, harvest. Relax, plants, young grasshoppers cool. in there butt so naked. Cool. You know, make sure you didn't steal <laughs> yeah. anything. Come on in. Take your socks, shoes, underwear <laughs> off. Come on in. Jump to the shower. Sit right there. It's sexual. <laughs> Sorry. It's off. a cold wooden chair. Well, as I walk in the door, he's a metal detector, making sure I'm <laughs> yeah. clear of everything. No like, all right, contaminants and no weapons come out <laughs> head sideways Go oh gosh <laughs> you, you talk about uh autos yeah I've, I've, I've grown a few one of my best or favorite auto harvests was a blue amnesia mm. and i think i've heard you talk about this because i was like that sounds sexy yeah it's like, beautiful it like a mixed drink well I've, 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 i mix them up because i've done a blue amnesia auto and i've also done an anesthesia auto um uh, the blue amnesia was absolutely incredible. It kind of checked all the boxes. It grew fantastic. I was able to train it. I do believe I might have topped it at the time because I was a little, I was young, ignorant, a little wet behind the ears before I realized topping was useless. And then uh, <laughs> small digs always. Eh? I'm gonna I'm dying yeah. on that sword. I'm dying <laughs> on that sword. Uh, and and it turned out fantastic. It gave me four big. Colas, I guess, stacks. It wasn't just colas. They were just four big stacks and of herb. And it, it's going to go down as, and, and it was great, great smoke. Best auto flower harvest. I just, you know, when it comes to autos, I just, you know, if you're going to look for big harvests, I just think you may as well just stay with the photo. You know, I just don't see the need for it unless you've got one tent. That's my only caveat to why I think you should grow an auto, but that's not for this conversation. It's got um, a whole video on it. Got a whole video. It does have a whole video. Out. Just Google Stop growing auto flowers. It'll yep. show up. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll show sure up. Will. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, what auto flowers? Auto flowers. It's a very hot topic. Very great conversation. I know you both have done auto flowers. <laughs> auto flowers. You ever had a? You ever have a large one? A big one? You're like, yeah, I need to show this one around the neighborhood. Yeah, I grew a, a auto chem dog from Fast Buds. Hated it. 
It definitely was not the smoke. <laughs> that was not the smoke I wanted. Old classic in living color reference. Yeah, <laughs> I, got I got that. There we go. <laughs> I don't want but, uh, these. It's a show. Oh, it's a classic show. Better. It's my favorite oh. song. I mean, hey, Mr. Strong. Um, the biggest thing that I realized with yeah, with cheers. when you're dealing, well, cheers to that. When you're dealing with an auto flower, size is a genetic factor. More times, I feel like that's a big determining thing. But then training the plant to comes into play. So my biggest one was that auto chem dog, and I did a little bit more training to that than the others I've grown. Hated the so that really sucked. Like it's one of those bitter sweets where I'm like, yeah, big buds looked great. Yeah, 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 good would have been good content. It's like. I'm the type of cynical person. I probably shoot myself in the foot. I could have documented some great looking harvests, like for Instagram or content. But man, I hated the, mm -hmm. hated it, mm -hmm. absolutely hated it. Like there was not a not hated a single it. gram. Hated it. <laughs> it was just <laughs> mid, bro. And that's where I think that like I don't look back at harvests that have been my big yielders and my big plants ever as my great ones mm -hmm. because they've always been ones that have been massive letdowns in the smoke. Where I've got so much of the that I still have like a QP at my mom's that I gave her that she's kind of just yeah, I'm mixing. I don't know why he gave this to me. Yeah, like she's even thinking I'm pissed at her or something. Yeah. Like, what did I do to this boy? Well, I the, what's crazy is I took back a little bit after a long cure and it kind of morphed a little bit. Like it got less sweet and more in like a runcy kind of funkiness to it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was all right. But man, that letdown of having something that I assume was going to be again chem dog. And I don't know. I'm done looking for chem dogs. It was so sweet and so not my bud that I literally have given all of it away. I smoked just maybe a half ounce. Mm. The rest mm. has just been given away. I had like six plants. Ugh. Ugh. Hated it. Well, that's not your garbage. It's enough of that depression. Uh, <laughs> it was big, though. <laughs> best <laughs> harvest. Is like... Best harvest. I think, I, think, I, think we've, I think the anticipation has been killing everybody. Chris, what is your best harvest of all time, hands down? It's going to be tough to beat. Oh, man. When do you guys or have you first? had it? Have you had okay? I know mine. Oh, maybe I haven't had it yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, oh, you? Me? All right. That's hard. I'll, I'll go first. I'll say it. I'll put it out there in my chest. So I was growing this uh one that Trey told me I should have kept, and I was just stupid and I didn't. Um you know, Winker almost gonna have to tell me scapegoats. What was it? We've talked about it before. Regulate. Regulate was what it was. Regulate. It was one that I didn't have any idea what it was the name regulate didn't make me think it was going to be bud that i liked there's nothing about it but it yielded great and i was like man that one in the back is funky like it just looks weird big buds got a gray look to it almost because it's so covered in trichomes and a blackish purplish green look to it but i kind of neglected it then i harvested it and i was like damn she yielded the most and as i'm trimming it, i was like it's like a cement glue funky gassy piney different nothing i anticipated and it was such a refreshing pleasant surprise i ended up getting like almost eight z's off a plant in a five gallon pot didn't do a whole lot of training to it beautiful bud structure and all of it smoked fire and like i'll never forget the feeling of like oh oh this is the one versus the one that i had all the hope in which still good was the headbanger but it yielded so poorly that i was just struggling to find the quality until i smoked it then i was like oh when you have something that the low expectations are there, that's when it shines more versus when I, I set a bar that I'm thinking it's going to hit this and it doesn't. I, I, I don't know. My mind just immediately hits on it. So it, I think that would be probably my favorite harvest. Yeah, I, Actually, it's funny. When I, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I go and buy clothes, <laughs> I'll make my references, I go and buy like two pairs of jeans. And I'm like, I really like these ones. And it's like two for one. And then I get like the second pair. I'm like, I'm just going to grab these ones because I get two for one. Then I get home and I, and I actually look at the second pair. I'm like, shit. That's the banger right those there. Those are yeah. the better ones. <laughs> yeah. These are really cool, man. Didn't I really like these. Didn't it. even try them on, man. But I, I look fly. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, for me to check all those boxes, it's funny. This is kind of like, this is kind of that story that I think that we all strive for, that each and every harvest, if everything goes well, should be your best you know like hopefully you get to apply everything from the past apply it to this grow and it sh hopefully it's your best one you know if all things go right and for me this this time it did this is going to be a really 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 tough one for me to beat and i want to give a shout out to the og boys because any good harvest starts with good genetics man and uh, for me i just finished growing a and harvesting dreadnought og and this is 
some of the funkiest, some of the nastiest, some of the dirtiest terps that I've had my hands on in a long time. It grew well. It trained well. This is sour diesel lineage, so it's not. It's a little prone to stress when you start to put in, or, or, or sorry, Hermie, if you start to put on a little high on the stress. So, but she did fantastic. The butt, like I, I filled a four by four tent with one plant. And this thing harvested, again, I also don't, I haven't weighed my harvests in years, man. It's just yeah. not relevant. I don't, I really don't for care. For content, is the only time I did for my autos, I did last I, time. It's the only, people, people ask, it's so the only it, reason yeah. I've ever done it is for the content reason. And, you know, it's like, without skipping a beat, she harvested me 15 ounces. And, you know, I, that's it the one, could the have been, single plant you, that you've been yeah, showing off four by Instagram? four. Yeah, I feel, I, I, you can, you can put about an ounce and a half into each jar. And I had like 11 jars. So it, it, like crazy weed. So I, I was a little bit conservative on the, on the estimate, but filling up that many jars, very, very impressed. And to top it all off, I put my hands into that cookie jar a little bit early and she didn't get a two-week cure. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I told you when you were sitting there almost out of bud and you were smoking oh, it all up and I was like, just dabble just into, dabble into it. Dabble it. Waited two more days and I don't know why. Yeah, But dude. let me tell you, it was the, oh, oh, and I'm so <laughs> glad I, I just, got Jars on jars on jars of that now. So, Wink, can you zoom in on my face real quick so I could say something to Doggo? I have talked to you about the flavor profile that I'm into. I have discussed with you what I like. <laughs> the fact that I didn't get that either, boy, hurts <laughs> my heart. <laughs> hurts my heart. Oh, God. Like the, oh, Everything you describe so about that good. nasty, dirty you're, white you're gonna, is Wink. Or you're going to be coming it? to Canada, bro, and I'm telling uh, you, I ain't, ain't going to be one of those I ain't going to smoke down a pound in like oh, eight gosh. weeks, so we're, we should be pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's going down for the books. And if I don't, if I don't harvest one like that for a minute, I, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay because that's that's one for the books. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm awesome. extremely jealous. I want that now. You guys, hopefully, I can keep some. <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> mean, uh, I got one more that comes to mind for me, and we're, we're gonna wrap things up here, so I'll be pretty quick. This just uh, twelve plants open room is one of my best, all different cultivars. Yeah, you know, it's just it comes to mind right away just because it. The variety. That's thing, something I'm still looking for today is just being able to Rice have King. a variety to consume, you know, rotate around. Right. And a uh, of life. open room, 12 different cultivars, seeing them all grow so differently and just expressing the way that they do. And oh, it's, it's awesome. Well, the, all the way from growing it to the harvest end result. I mean, I don't have any numbers memorized on what I did for weight or anything like that for that run, but that definitely comes to mind as one of the best just because I got – that variety that I was looking for. And uh, you know, I got that. I remember getting, you know, four or five ounces per plant on that run. Um, you know, it's typically what I aim for. Uh, well, three, three, four ounces I'm okay with per plant. So it's growing smaller plants. But uh, yeah, that variety is king. I was pumped. Yeah. Well, that, that circles back to my initial story that I was, that's the one that's most memorable for me, you know, was yeah. that. And I feel like that's where it was most impactful of knowing the variety of cultivars that are out there. The variety of terpenes that are out there, experiences. What I really liked, the one that I'd have for nine months to a year down the road later, because I didn't smoke it. And it was the last jar that was in the corner. I was like, it's good. But the other stuff I've been binge smoking, <laughs> that, that shit right there. But I didn't clone any of the original ones that I had. Huh. None of them. Because I was like, oh, I'll get better ones. It's good. But like I want to get, you know, Durban Poison, OG Kush, and AK 47, Granddaddy Per like names that you see in the magazines. And grass isn't always green on the other side. You got to look at some of these harvests. These are ones that, at the time, I did not think at all was going to be one that I talked about 10 years later. And like, this little harvest was my best harvest. Like, no, but man, was it the most impactful. I'll never forget it. You know, I think that's really what it is for the, the viewers or the listeners. Like, which harvest for you was most impactful? Yeah, so I want to know in the comment got, section. Yeah. You got three different gardeners. Three different harvests, three different expectations, three different excitement levels. Like <laughs> th that's it. What was your best harvest? Was it was it the yield? Was it the potency? Was it the fact that you were just able to look at this and be like, "Wow, this is my first harvest," and I'm so so happy to be able to provide for my family because I remember that feeling. That kid can eat finally. That <laughs> kid can eat, and he's going to school now. Mm -hmm. No so, more table scraps. No more table scraps. We got yeah. weed now. Weed now <laughs> we we get a fork. <laughs> uh, we we want to hear from you guys, man. What were your best harvests? Are there cultivars that stand out compared to others that are a little bit easier, maybe a little more difficult, that have profiles that speak to you? 
want to hear from you. Uh, if you didn't know, we're live every single week on Thursdays, twitch.tv slash from the stash. You can catch us live 1 p.m. East Central, 2 Eastern, and 11 Pacific. You can come check us out on our website as well, fromthestash.com. You can go slash merch and check out some of the latest merch that we have to drop. We've had a couple of drinks, so my S's are kind of like in a bit. But we actually recorded this live in front. Did I say that? No. We recorded this live in front of a live audience. Twitch.tv slash fromthestash. You got to come check us out. We were cheers in mid-episode because the love was just so tremendous over there. So we appreciate you guys. I drink every liquid in my reach. Yeah, I'm out. This is why we got to end this. We can go around it. Fill her back up, guys. Huge shout to AC Infinity. Oh, she's gonna say that. Yeah, we appreciate you to guys. AC Infinity. They've got the spot on the banner, man. We appreciate everything. On behalf of myself, Rob, Chris, Wayne, it's FDS, baby. We'll check you out next week. Peace. Peace. Peace.